But they're like, oh wait, it's more than just a macro. It's not just the macros. People keep talking about macros now as if this thing never happened. <laughs>
also tied to metabolic syndrome. Vitamin D is also, uh, vitamin D is tied uh, inversely with, with metabolic syndrome. Mm. So the higher vitamin D levels are associated with better insulin sensitivity. Uh, so you can see even among the minerals and the vitamins that they have different effects on the body, how the body acts. Now, also things that you don't, wouldn't, th they're not calories, but things that you eat. Like for example, putting red pepper on your food. Capsaicin from red pepper incre increases the metabolism. Now, drinking green tea or coffee right after your food will increase your metabolism, change how everything's being used. And I honestly, I don't just think it increases the metabolism, I think it changes how the calories are used as well. What else can we, vinegar. Eating vinegar with your food increases in insulin sensitivity. Now this is not robust, it's not across all studies shown, but it has been shown in some studies, the vinegar. That's why I add vinegar to our salads. Well, you, 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 she, she eats less vinegar than I do, because it doesn't taste great, but I eat a lot of it. So the point is what I'm trying to get to here is that the foods are, it's not to think such a reductionist way, that I, it's just calories. So if I'm eating a cupcake, it's the same as something else. We all know Know that from I just I just gave you some reviews from academic literature, but we know this from personal experience. You can eat 2,000 or 1,500 calories of cupcakes, and you'll get skinny fat. Right? That's what'll happen. You'll get skinny, but you'll be fat. You're not gonna get that ripped look that the bodybuilders want, and you're not gonna get these kind of things because you're signaling to your body different ways, and you're providing it with different nutrients. It's food is is a horm act it causes hormonal changes in our body and provides our bodies with tools. And those tools often also cause ch uh, signaling changes in our body. So to think that uh, calories, a calorie is a calorie is a calorie, is a reductionist way of thinking that is really, uh, to be honest, a little infantile and uh, ignorant way of thinking about the body. It's assuming the body is stable and that there's nothing else in those calories, but food is much more than that and the body's not stable. The body's changing from the food you're eating. Now to answer his direct question, he said he finds it harder to lose fat when he's eating carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. Now there's many reasons you could think about that, including the insulin and stuff like that, but what I would like to, this is my personal experience. What I notice is that when I have, when I eat more carbohydrates, and by the way, everybody's different about this because people digest carbohydrates differently according to their genetics as well. So there's certain genes, like I showed you have some of the agricultural yeah. genes where I have more hunter-gatherer genes. People like me, just because of that individual polymorphism, digest you know grains and stuff worse and we react worse to it. But other than that, Think of it this way, the more carbohydrates you eat, the higher your glycogen stores are, and the more your body is adapted to using glucose as a fuel. When that happens, your body is less likely to tap into fat because it has all that glycogen, unless you're using, it depends on your activity, obviously. If you're using, if you're doing very intense activity, it's always gonna hit the glycogen. If you're doing less intense, they say it's gonna hit more, you're gonna do more lipolysis, more uh, use of fat. However, the, the truth of the matter is if you have so much glycogen stored and you're used to using glucose, in general, you're gonna burn less fat than if you're used to using only fat and you have less glycogen. Yeah. So for example, if you're in a ketogenic diet, you have very little glycogen, or if you're fasting, you have extremely little glycogen, your body is tempted to use fat constantly, right? So this is, so if you're eating carbs, you have basically a buffer mm -hmm. to losing that fat and uh, you know there's many other reasons the signaling depending on your genetics stuff like that most people that I know and the satiety obviously it seems to be a, even though insulin comes out and you get leptin it seems in general people are more satiated if they're eating protein and, and fat which who knows people theorize maybe because there's the ketones are actually causing a nausea in you that cause you to be less hungry, or it's the protein signaling, you know, reducing the AMP kinase and increasing the mTOR, but they all have different effects. In general, my personal experience is, uh, if I'm eating carbohydrates, especially from grains, it's very difficult to lose weight. Yeah, same. Yeah, exactly. She has the same experience as well. All right, thank you for your question. A calorie is not a calorie is not a calorie. Have a great day.